Welcome to Sens Talk. My name is Brandon and I am your host. The time is nigh. Training camp is here and that means the regular season is just around the corner. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the best time of the year and today we're going to preview some of the individual battles that are going to be taking place at the Ottawa Sanders 2022 training camp. I want to make it clear at the beginning of this video, which by the way, speaking of this video, this video is going to be much longer than other videos, so be ready for that. Um, but Going back to what I was about to say, this is not a season preview video. I put those videos out, you know, usually a week or so before the regular season starts. That's usually when we have a better idea of what the entire starting lineup is going to look like. Right now, we have a good idea of what the top six, the top four, and the goal tank tandem will look like. But overall, we kind of still don't really know what's going to happen the bottom six and the bottom pairings in the defense. So uh, there's still a lot to look at and still a lot to be decided. So the season preview videos where I go through each different position, the forwards, the defense, and the goalies in individual videos, uh, that will be out probably the week before the regular season starts. So today, what we're going to be discussing is the individual battles we should be taking a close look at as camp opens up. But before we do that, I just want to discuss quickly, you know, the top six for Ottawa. You know, the first lines could be Brady Kachuk, Josh Norris, Drake Batherson. That line had 166 total points last year, 82 goals. Beautiful. The second line is projected to be Alex Debrinkat, Tim Stutzla, Claude Giroux. Oh my god, that is beautiful. 201 total points last year all combined. Of course, Giroux and Debrinkat just got brought in. Uh, so those are points uh, from, of course, Chicago with Debrinkat and Florida and Philadelphia with Giroux. But that's still fantastic. 201 total points, 84 goals. So it's kind of interesting there. The first line had like 42 less points, but two, only two less goals. So the second line clearly loves to distribute the puck, which would result in a lot of goals going your way for the Ottawa Sanders. Uh, but of course, we'll discuss more of that, uh, you know, in the season preview video. But I only wanted to bring up the top six because look at this picture right here. Oh my heavens. The Sanders tweeted out this picture today of Debrinkat, Stutzel, and Giroux. And immediately, Deja Vu came to me. Uh, of, of course, that famous picture of Spence. A Heatley and Alfie. Um, not comparing the two, but it has the potential that line to be just like that. So, chef's kiss. The defense so far is projected to be Shabbat and Zubis, the top pairing, Sanderson and Hamnick uh, as the second pairing. Uh, we'll see how that progresses throughout camp. But that is essentially what the top six and top four uh, for your Ottawa Sanders are going to look like going into the 2022 2023 regular season. Now, let's get into some intriguing training camp battles. The first battle I want to preview is Ottawa's fourth line. Look, two-thirds of the fourth line appear to be set. You know, you got Dylan Gambrell. He signed here on a one-year contract extension. He's fine defensively. He's likely going to be the opening night fourth line center. Austin Watson, he's here for another couple years too. Uh, he's, of course, going to be on the fourth line right wing position, which means there's one position left for two viable candidates. That, of course, being Parker Kelly and Mark Kasselik. Parker Kelly, in my opinion, is the front runner to secure a job on the fourth line for the Sanders this year, and for good reason. Out of all the rookies vying to make the opening night roster, Kelly is the one with the most National Hockey League experience. He appeared in 41 games last year, compiling 12 points, 5 goals in those games. Kelly is a logical choice to debut in Ottawa's fourth line this season due to the energy he really does bring to Ottawa's bottom six. Guess what? In those 41 games he played last year, he threw 131 hits. 131 hits in those 41 games. That's almost... That's more than three hits per game. Incredible. He is throwing around the body like a wrecking ball out there. He has well had 11 takeaways, which shows that he's often, you know, well positioned to defensively break up plays, which is exactly what you need in your, you know, fourth line, especially for a young uh, rookie like a Parker Kelly. To have positive defensive stats is something that's kind of unique. And for your fourth line, you're not looking for offense. You're looking for energy and defense. And Parker Kelly can bring both. Now, the reason Kelly isn't a slam dunk to make the team is due to Mark Kaslick, who impressed in short stints last year with the big club. He had four points in his 16 games last year with Ottawa, but he's more of an attractive option, not because of his offense, but because of his defense and faceoff abilities. Kaslick had a fantastic 58% faceoff win percentage last season, winning an incredible 70 of 120 faceoffs. Unbelievable, especially for a rookie. He is well through around 51 hits in those 16 games too, 
showing that Castlick can bring the energy as well. So he's a viable option there too, if you want to have some energy on your fourth line. In my opinion, this might be the most competitive battle uh, in this training camp. So definitely keep an eye on this. Both candidates, you know, Kelly and Castlick have good opportunities to make this team. I think they pick Kelly due to the high energy that he brings, but Kasselik's face-off percentage gives him much more of a fair shot at securing a job on the fourth line. You know, even though that Dylan Gambrell will likely be the fourth line center, it never hurts to have another guy on the wing that can win face-offs, and especially at a good clip, which Kasselik can't. So keep an eye on this, you know, battle between Kasselik and Kelly, but as of right now, I would probably give the edge to Parker Kelly. Well, I did mention at the beginning of this video that Ottawa's goaltending tandem to begin the season will likely be a committee. Uh, you know, a tandem that doesn't have a definitive starter. They're just going to ride the hot hand. But you know what? Regardless of that, even though there's no real starter, it is safe to say that both goaltenders are going to want to perform their best this preseason to give a good first impression to head coach DJ Smith. It just makes sense. You know, it's very clear it's expected that, or projected, I guess, that DJ Smith is going to ride the hot hand every single night if a goaltender is playing better than the other one he gets the starts and vice versa so it's very obvious why there's a battle here and more importantly why both goaltenders will want to perform their best let's take a look at both goaltenders and what they can bring to the table Anton Forsberg last year frankly without him Ottawa definitely loses even more games and that's frankly almost impossible but I promise you Ottawa loses even more games without Anton Forsberg in net he played in 46 games played he had 22 wins 17 losses and four overtime losses he had a 917 save percentage a 2.82 goals against average and one shutout look the numbers the 917 save percentage the 2.82 goals against average those are way above league average and by the way uh Anton Forsberg was not on a league average defensive team he was on one of the worst teams uh defensively in NHL history so the fact he put up such impressive numbers puts it into question whether or not he can replicate those numbers. I personally think he can because the support cast around him has much improved. He's not going to have to sprawl out of his net a million times anymore because more often than not, Ottawa should have puck possession or at least better puck possession numbers than they did last year, which of course will help Anton Forsberg and his game, regardless if he can replicate last year's number. Now with Cam Talbot, he uh, played in 49 games played last year with the Minnesota Wild, winning 32 games, uh, losing 12, and then losing four in overtime. He had a 9-11 save percentage and a 2.76 goals against average and three shutouts look the the save percentage is a little low just around league average the goals against average though is fantastic 2.76 uh you know minnesota had a very strong season last year they really came out uh guns and blazing in the first part of the season cam talbot was on fire to start off the season he kind of trailed off in the second half but he still put up respectable numbers so i would predict that anton forsberg has the upper hand and out of respect for his efforts last year he will likely open up the season as the you know de facto starter It'll be interesting to see if Cam Talbot can force himself into the conversation during the preseason and the opening few weeks of the regular season. I have a feeling DJ will definitely, like I already said, as it's expected to be, I expect DJ Smith, he will be riding the hot hand in the net. So really, the onus is on Forsberg and, of course, Talbot to prove to DJ Smith that they deserve to get those starting minutes. So that's really a battle to watch. And, you know, when I had John Abbott on the show, he mentioned that Cam Talbot is one of the most friendly and good teammates in the National Hockey League. You know, these dynamics of two goaltenders going at it, for some people on the outside, including myself, of course, you know, we're all outside observers looking in. You would think that for goaltending, uh, for such a battle, there would be some animosity there, some, you know, tension there, but Cam Talbot is apparently a great teammate. So don't worry about that either. I expect there to be smooth sailing between the two. And we can see a relationship like, you know, 10, 12 years ago now, uh, back in Vancouver with Corey Schneider and Roberto Luongo. That is exactly what I'm hoping to be, where both goaltenders gives you a shot to win every single night, and the relationship is only positive and not negative. So that's a battle to keep an eye on uh, going into this camp. Once again, I do expect Forsberg to get the starting minutes to open up the season, but Cam Talbot will definitely be battling and doing his best to force his name into that conversation too. So keep an eye on that. Another key battle that I'm watching is the third pairing role between Eric Brandstrom and Nikita Zaitsev. It is expected that Nick Holden will be on the third pairing no matter what. I would have to agree with that. He is arguably 
one of Ottawa's better defenders. He just signed a contract extension here, and he wasn't doing that without expecting to get top six minutes. So because of that, Holden is, you know, he's going to be on the third pairing. So the question really is, who will be playing with Nick Holden? Will it be Eric Brandstrom or Nikita Zaitsev? Well, look, Zaitsev not being traded this past offseason is kind of a shock. We all expected it to happen. It was really, you know, speculated quite often that Zaitsev would be heading to uh, Arizona or Chicago for cap, you know, dumping reasons, but he's not. He's still on the team. And, you know, Branstrom, by the way, he signed a one-year prove-it contract. So both these players have something to prove. Zaitsev was expected to be shipped out. Branstrom was given nothing more than a prove-it contract. So these two will have to battle with one another to prove to this organization that not only they're worth starting on opening night, but worth keeping around long-term. Now, not much has to be said about Nikita Zaitsev. I'm sure he's a nice guy, and I don't really want to go too hard on him. But his contract is an albatross contract. It's way overpriced for what he brings to the table. And his defensive abilities are lacking at best. He was often an anchor to Thomas Shabbat and was a negative impact player whenever he was on the ice. Uh, to open up camp, Zaitsev has been paired with Nick Holden, which means, in my opinion, he is the presumptive third-pairing guy with Nick Holden. It will be Holden with Zaitsev. And that's difficult for a guy like Eric Branstrom, who opens up camp on a pairing with Jacob Bernard Docker. Now, no disrespect to JBD. Love the guy. But, and a friend of the show, but JBD is expected to start in Belleville, which means that Eric Branstrom is right now projected to be Ottawa's seventh defenseman going into the season. So in a prove-it year, uh, Eric Branstrom has to shift that from a seventh defenseman to a third pairing role, and he has to do it quickly. Uh, last season, Branstrom had 14 points and 53 games played, all assists. But you know what? He looked like a solid NHL defenseman, one pair with Nick Holden last year in short stints, which ironically would be his D partner if he does crack the opening night roster. So in a prove-it year for Eric Branstrom, watch for a big preseason from the former top prospect. You know, I think Eric Branstrom is frankly fighting for his career opportunity with the Ottawa Senators. If he doesn't put on a good performance in this preseason and he's not a starter on a regular basis uh, going into the regular season and throughout the regular season, he's not going to be an Ottawa Senator for much longer. So this is really our make or break training camp and preseason for Eric Branstrom. And for Nikita Zaitsev, look, Zaitsev is still an NHL caliber guy. It's more of his contract that's really weighing him down. He's not the best defensively, but in a sheltered third pairing role, he's fine. You know, he can definitely play NHL minutes. And I think maybe for him, he's looking at this and like wondering to himself, is this an opportunity for me to prove around the National Hockey League again, regardless of my Albatross contract, that I'm still an NHL defenseman? So both players have something to prove, so definitely keep an eye on this battle. The last battle I want to preview is Ottawa's third line left wing position. With Alex Formton still unsigned and an ongoing investigation still very much underway, the third line left wing role is very much up for grabs. The rest of the line is essentially set with Shane Pinto and Matthew Joseph making up the other parts of that line respectfully, but... That third line left wing role is very much up for grabs. So who's going to take it? Well, here are some candidates for the role. Derek Broussard, you know, he is a legend, kind of. You know, he had a big goal against the Rangers uh, back in 2017 in that run to the conference finals. He was, frankly, massive in that run. Without him, we wouldn't have went as far as we did. So Derek Broussard, welcome back, firstly. Pretty cool to see you around. He's on a PDO. So if he doesn't perform well this preseason and training camp, the Sanders will cut him or release him from his PDO. So Derek Broussard has a lot to prove and a lot to play for. You know, look, he played 46 games last year, compiling 19 points between Philadelphia and Edmonton. He provides a lot of experience and leadership to an otherwise young third line. Look, if you're on the third line, you're expected to have some offensive abilities, but you still want to be solid defensively too, a good two-way kind of game. Derek Broussard has a lot of experience and will bring some good leadership to help that third line flourish to the best of their abilities. Another potential option is Tyler Mott. You know, he was brought in here as a free agent uh, this past offseason, and Mott is a pure energy forward that's defensively orientated. With Matthew Joseph and Shane Pinto as offensive guys, does it make sense for the Sens to have Mott here? Or should he be on the fourth line? Now, of course, with the battle between Parker Kelly and Mark Kasselik, I don't think Mott will get a spot over those two. So Mott maybe gets a third line, uh, you know, role here. We know DJ Smith likes to spread around the love. He has some offensive guys and some defensive guys. Maybe Tyler Mott is the defensive guy on that third line. The last candidate I want to discuss is Angus Crookshank, the Sens prospect and friend of the show, was out the entire year last year with an ACL tear. 
it's really easy to root for this kid. He's a great guy. Uh, if you watched our interviews, you can see it through the interview. He is an incredible person, very genuine, and he, you know, no one deserves an opportunity to make the big club like Angus Crookshank. He's worked so hard to come back from what he had to persevere from over the last year, and he is back with a vengeance. Let me tell you, after dominating the rookie tournament this past week, Crookshank is looking to put his name back into the conversation to make the opening night roster with 16 points in his 19 pro games, only 19 pro games. So there is a good chance that Crookshank starts the year in Belleville, but eventually he's called up to the big club here in Ottawa. Uh, he is an offensive driver and could complement, frankly, the third line pretty well. His skating will allow him to play a solid two-way game, but he has great hands and good offensive abilities, plus a hammer of a shot. I mean, holy cow, in the rookie tournament, he had like two or three one-timer blasts on great passes from Sense prospect Philip Dewey, by the way. But Crookshank has an absolute cannon of a shot that, frankly, I didn't know he had. So maybe that's another element to his game that he can bring to the table. So, you know, with Angus Crookshank, once again, I do expect him to probably start the year in Belleville. But he's certainly a player that can get an opportunity um, sometime, hopefully within the first month or two, of the regular season but you know i'm sure there's some battles i didn't mention i'm sure there's some players i forgot to include make sure to let me know in the comment section down below who i missed what battles i missed and what you think about those battles and players that i missed there's only so much time i can do uh so of course if there's some battles or some players i didn't mention uh you know in the in this video make sure to comment them down below i'll make sure to debate with you i'd love to continue this conversation in the comment section so make sure to comment down below let me know what you think what do you think about what i have to say about the battles that I previewed as well. So much to discuss. I'll make sure to continue this conversation with you guys down below in the comment section. Thank you all for watching. The regular season is around the corner. Preseason is underway starting this Saturday at 1 o'clock against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hockey is here. It's a great time to be live. So I'll see you in the next few days. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you very soon. Go Sens go.